Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, my name's Alexa Ray. I'm so glad you're here, and I'm so glad you clicked on today's video. My past few videos on my channel have really just been about all the books I have on my bookshelves, whether it be organizing my bookshelves, book hauls, book unhauls. I just recently did my physical TBR. We're not even gonna talk about that monstrosity. And since that video, I have gone on a book buying ban until further notice, until I am able to knock off some books. I need to lower my physical TBR before I bring any more books into my house. I'm honestly just running out of room as well. So since that video, I've been brainstorming different ways, different challenges to basically bring me down from that 150 mark. I really want to knock off a good chunk of books off my physical TBR by the end of the year. And when I hit a roadblock when it comes to brainstorming different ideas and challenges to do, I always turn to YouTube. Of course, of course I do. One of my favorite, favorite booktubers to watch though is just Allie. I feel like most of you, if not all of you, already watch her and know about her. She's one of my favorites though and she's always doing such fun reading challenges on her page. A newer little series she just started up on her channel is trying to finish every book series she's currently in the middle of. And I just think that's brilliant. I absolutely love that idea. It's just so fun and different. I've never seen it before. So I thought for today's video, we would give the challenge a try and I would attempt to finish every single book series that I am currently in the middle of. Here's a list of all the book series I am currently in the middle of and I have to say when I was going through all the books, I was shook. I could not believe how many book series that I was just like in the middle of. I don't know why I picked these series up and then just never continued them, but here we are. This is going to be super fun though. I'm really excited. I've never done this before on my channel. I think it's going to be a nice little switch up, especially because doing 24 hour readathons back to back to back to back is not good for your girl. It does not make your girl feel well. So this is a super fun and new reading challenge that we're gonna try out on my channel. Hopefully we can turn it in to a little series as well, just like Allie did. The goal for this whole little series is to knock as many books off my TBR as possible before the year ends. So I have been practicing my French a lot recently, as you guys have probably seen in past videos of mine. I'm always trying to slip in a little French to show you how far I've come along. I've actually gotten a few questions about it. I took French for four years in high school and then continued on a little bit in college. I've always just loved the language. I love the culture. It's just fun. It's cool to know another language. After graduating college, I didn't want the language to slip away from me. I didn't want to get rusty with it, so I've been working on it and practicing. There have definitely been a little pronunciation hiccups along the way, but thanks to Live XP, I'm feeling so much more comfortable and confident in my French. I really feel like I'm getting a grip on it again. Live XP was so kind to sponsor today's video. I'm so excited to be working with them and share with you guys their amazing platform where you can learn a new language. I also feel like I've been reading so many books that either take place in France or have French in the writing. One of the more recent ones is actually Crossed by Emily McIntyre. You guys will see that later in this video, but reading books like that that either have French in it Have some type of French culture. It just makes me fall more in love with it It makes me so excited to learn more about the language if you've never heard of live XP before though I'm about to introduce you guys to the best language learning platform out there Basically live XP is an online platform where you can find language tutors and take one-on-one -on -one lessons with them to start a new language Work on your pronunciation literally me right now or just master your skills. They offer over 30 languages to choose from over 2,000 tutors from around the world, and you're also able to choose tutors who are native speakers from the UK, China, and Spain, which I thought was super cool. But what I love most about LiveXP is that you're actually able to filter your tutors by interest. That is so cool. I'm talking fashion, photography, book lovers, me. 
me i'm a book lover i just think that is so cool because i'm learning from someone who is also a book lover so we kind of have that connection and not only does that make me super excited to talk to them and learn from them but it also just makes me feel more comfortable almost like i know them a little bit more another amazing thing about live xp is that you can learn and practice at your own pace with your own schedule i really really appreciate this because sometimes my schedule can be a little crazy although i typically do my lessons on my laptop live xp is also available on your phone which i think is really cool if you're on the go or in a hurry you can just pop on really quick live xp is absolutely incredible they will help you achieve all of your language learning goals and i have a little discount for you guys if you want to check it out if you use my link down below or screenshot my promo code right here go ahead screenshot it i'll give you a minute you'll get your 30 minute trial lesson for just 99 cents and then your subscription for 30 percent off but with all that being said let's hop in to the reading vlog so the first book we're going to be tackling in today's video is Redeemed by Lauren Asher. This is book four in the Dirty Air series. Actually, the very last book in the series, which is super exciting. So many people have raved about it and said it's their favorite one out of the series. Santi and Chloe are their absolute favorite couple. Lauren Asher is one of my favorite authors at the moment, and I just think she writes such incredible romances. So this tells the story of Santiago, though. He's the older brother of Maya, who book one is all about. It's also about Chloe, who is this cutie all-american girl who has absolutely no idea what f1 is which i thought was absolutely hilarious if you're not familiar with the dirty air series the entire series revolves around f1 drivers and in each book each driver like finds love i know it sounds very cheesy and cliche but it's amazing i have to say going into this series i was super nervous because i myself don't really know a lot about f1 and i didn't think i was gonna like the books because of it but i literally could not be more wrong you learn a lot about f1 throughout the book there's a lot of traveling and it's just so fun honestly some of my favorite favorite romances are by Lauren Asher so I have a lot of hope for this but anyways this tells the story of Santi and Chloe the way this book starts off is definitely very heavy and sad and honestly kind of tragic there's some crazy stuff that happens to Santi in the beginning of this book that kind of causes like a roadblock for him in his career and his like life dreams and it hit me so stinking hard because we get to know Santi over the course of the last three books and you fall in love with him like his character is just so fun and a be. I just love his character so much so for this to start off the way it did it literally ripped my heart out. Santi is currently residing in Italy and then Chloe again she's an all-American girl so she's in America and her life dream is to meet her real father because she has no idea who he is. I'm pretty sure her dad also doesn't know she exists so it's like a big dream of Chloe to find him meet him and hopefully have a relationship with him. For Chloe's birthday though her best friend gives her one of those like ancestry kids things and she was able to track down her real father and it turns out can you guys guess where her dad lives he lives in Italy of course so Chloe decides to take a very big chance and travel to Italy hoping she can actually find her father and hopefully have a relationship with him just from the first few chapters I find Chloe incredibly brave like who would just hop on a plane to a new country to find this stranger and hopefully have a relationship with them. Of course, traveling to Italy, this is how Chloe and Santi meet, and I have to say, the way they meet is not how I expected them to meet. I thought it was really funny, but also really, really cheesy. It's very weird and crazy the way they met, and Santi is definitely giving off all the grumpy vibes. But anyways, I just left off at their meeting, and I can already tell their relationship is going to be the craziest, but also the most fun out of this entire series. So we're gonna keep going and see what happens. Chapter 10, page 96. The mess 
that Chloe and Santi are getting themselves into right now is honestly so crazy. I think what Santi and Chloe are kind of doing together is really crazy, but I also think what Chloe is doing on her own to get to know her dad more is just as crazy. This is going to be a very wild, wild story. I feel like a lot of the story is going to be relying on lies that Santi and Chloe are telling, and they just keep telling all these lies and they keep digging themselves this hole, and I just know it's gonna blow up in their faces. This is just so crazy the things that they are lying about right now anyways we also get to see Maya and Noah show up for a brief moment and I love that I'm hoping we get to see Maya and Noah throughout this story it was really sweet to see them very briefly and see the family that they've created it's just ugh, makes me so happy when we revisit old characters from previous books it just makes my heart so happy I do feel like though this is gonna be a really cool story the main story is obviously Santi and Chloe together and we're gonna watch as their relationship develops and they get to know each other but they each have their own like personal side stories that we're getting a glimpse into chloe is trying to find her father and santi is also trying to deal with this crazy tragic thing that's happened to him we're only 10 chapters in so i'm sure this is going to get even crazier i'm just surprised at how crazy it's gotten and we're only on chapter 10. Under the heat, I'm half away. Santi and Chloe are giving me all the happy vibes right now. They're so cute. We have made quite the dent in Redeemed. It's honestly, it's not going the way I thought it was going to go. I'm very surprised at how the storyline is kind of progressing, especially between Chloe and Santi. I feel like because of how they met in the beginning, it was so weird and crazy. I think I was expecting something different to happen i don't know i don't know but nonetheless i think it is so stinking cute i'm absolutely loving their story again i think chloe is so incredibly brave what she is doing traveling across the world to meet her father who doesn't even know she exists i am just loving her storyline but i'm also loving santi's storyline because we're watching him struggle throughout the book trying to come to terms with what happened in his life and we're just watching him navigate it and i think what i love so much about this so far is we're obviously watching Chloe and Santi grow closer but we're also watching them grow as individuals in the beginning of the story Santi was super grumpy he didn't want to talk to anybody he didn't want to go out or be around people Chloe has definitely brought out like a different side to him I feel like Chloe's bringing out the old Santi and I love it because now we're getting like the Santi we got to meet in the first three books we're getting that Santi back and he's my favorite Santi it's really cute Chloe definitely has a lot of of baggage like she comes from a very hard and sad past I definitely relate to probably more so than I wish honestly so I definitely am like connecting to her on so many different levels and I kind of like that because in a way this story feels like more realistic and I think I said this about book three which is wrecked Jax and Elena and Santi and Chloe they feel so real because they're navigating like real world problems but I like that I hope that doesn't come across wrong but I'm just enjoying like how real these characters feel to me I'm loving their story and they're really cute. Sweet. Ah! People are staring at me! I'm pretty far in the book, honestly. I'm a little bit more than halfway, but I think thought we would switch it up a little bit whenever I do my 24-hour readathons I am just reading at home on my couch in my bed on the floor because that's basically what 24-hour readathons are we're gonna switch it up a little bit get a little change of scenery I am always reading at home and sometimes it gets so boring so I thought it'd be really fun to maybe go read a little bit at a coffee shop today I love reading at coffee shops and bookstores there's just something so cozy and aesthetic about it, it makes my heart so happy i can't even explain the happiness it like gives off that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go get a coffee maybe a little snack sit down and read for a little bit i want to try and finish this up today something else i really love about lauren asher books is that i think it's because her writing style is so easy going i just fly through her books and i love that we're just gonna vibe today
If I could tell you, I don't think you'd believe how long I felt this way. I'm begging you to stay. And if I could show you, I'd hope that you could see all the possibilities. There could be a place for you and me. So I only have this itty bit left and I'm actually going to finish it in my car. I see so many other people read in their car and I actually read in my car more than I realize because when we go on road trips or long drives, I always have my Kindle or a book with me to read, but I never just like come and sit in my car and read. Apparently, according to so many other booktubers and so many other readers, people love reading in their car. Anyways, I'm going to try and finish this little bit up now because the spot I left off at, it was kind kind of getting spicy not like spicy spicy like like drama spicy it's kind of getting like dramatic i feel like i could definitely feel the big conflict we're gonna hit it's gonna happen i'm nervous to be completely honest it's gonna be very messy and there's gonna be a lot of drama so see how it goes usually when i'm reading in the car chris is usually driving and i'm like vibing as the passenger princess and reading so we're gonna try it out see what happens No way. You know what? I had a feeling. I had this weird, weird feeling that this was going to happen. Gosh, that's spicy. This book started off as like a five star for me and then it kind of got weird and I was like, okay, maybe it'll be like a four star. And now I literally feel like I'm gonna knock it down to like two stars. Is that dramatic of me that I might rate this two stars just because of one single chapter? No, I'm actually so frustrated right now. I literally can't stand Chloe's character. Is that like so mean of me? Just not it for me right now. I am so upset. I honestly feel so bad for Santi because he's such a good and genuine person. I feel like he deserves better. <laughs> okay, I feel like I'm being dramatic right now. I have to finish this because now I have to know what happens and how it gets resolved. I really hope this isn't a two-star read for me. We finished Redeemed by Lauren Asher. I want to say like the last hundred pages. That was like infuriating to read. I was very, very frustrated with Chloe's character. This book like took such a weird turn. I'm kind of upset with the way it went. Watching like her actions play out, <laughs> it made me very upset. Okay, in all reality though, this was like a roller coaster also. Like the last hundred, 150 pages, it was like five star, four star, two star, four star again. <laughs> the final rating I'm gonna leave this with is a four star rating because I loved the majority of this book except for like probably like 50 pages toward the end when it was like Chloe messing up the entire story and self-sabotaging herself. That was when it was really low for me and that's what knocks it down from a five star but other than those few chapters this was so stinking cute and I loved Santi and Chloe's story. I love Santi's character and I'm so stinking proud of Santi for like how far he came throughout this entire story. The entire story I I was like oh I think it's so cool because Chloe is so brave and optimistic but by the end of it it was Santi like Santi is everything in this book he is so genuine and sweet and just perfect everything he does for Chloe and the people around him his friends and family he's just such a caring and compassionate person and I absolutely loved his character and I'm so proud of him and how far he came in the story I'm so happy with how it ended we also got an epilogue and then an extended epilogue Love. Don't even get me started on those. Those were so, so perfect. I am so happy with the way this series wrapped up and how we get to see all the couples from all the books come together. I'm such a sucker for the found family trope. It's honestly like one of my favorite tropes to read about. This is really cute. I highly, highly recommend this entire series. Jax and Elena are still like my favorite favorite couple out of the series. Their love is everything. But Chloe and Santi are definitely a close second. Hey guys.
We Start Crossed by Emily McIntyre. This is the fifth book in the Never After novels. It literally just came out. It's a hunchback of Notre Dame reimagining. If you're not familiar with the Never After novels, I have slowly been tackling them over the course of this year. So if you want to hear about the first four books, definitely go check out my other reading vlogs because these books have literally taken over my entire life this year. I actually started 2023 out with Hooked by Emily McIntyre. That's a Peter Pan reimagining. I have to say, like going into this series, it was another series I was very hesitant about because they're fairy tale reimaginings and they mainly revolve around the villains from our favorite classic fairy tales. So Hooked revolved around Captain Hook from Peter Pan, and I was like, there's no way. There's no way I'm gonna fall in love with Hook because it's Captain Hook. And then book two was a Lion King reimagining, and that revolved around Scar from the Lion King. That one was so so good. Book three was Wretched. That was a Wizard of Oz reimagining. It really wasn't my favorite. And then book four was Twisted, which is a Aladdin reimagining, which I thought was really fun. But still, Hooked and Scarred were like my all-time faves, my favorite books in the series. Then this came out. I just love the idea of our favorite classic fairy tales being reimagined and the stories revolving around the villains. I just think that's so cool and different and almost kind of thrilling. I didn't think I was going to like this because it's a Hunchback of Notre Dame reimagining. Imagining, and I loved The Hunchback of Notre Dame growing up, but at the same time, it wasn't like my all-time favorite. So we started this. I'm halfway through this. I literally started this book and I have not put it down since. This one is not as dark as the first four books. Like the first four books, there are some very like dark, grungy moments. And there's also like some super spicy moments. But with this one, I don't feel feel like it's as dark as the other ones, which I find really, really interesting. I'm literally obsessed with this though. I am obsessed with Cade and Amaya's story. Cade is literally a priest. <laughs> is our reimagined villain from The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Amaya is our reimagined girl as Merelda. If you're familiar with The Hunchback of Notre Dame, like you kind of already understand the story of this, but basically just imagine Esmeralda falling in love with the priest. <laughs> So wrong in so many levels. The way he cares for Amaya and her little brother and the way he's looking after them. And then Parker, who I believe Parker is like the blonde from the Hunchback of Notre Dame that Esmeralda like falls in love with. I think he's like the hero in that story. He's clearly the bad guy in this one. Then he is just horrible. He's a horrible, horrible human. The way that Cade stands up to Parker and stands up for Amaya and her brother. Swooning so hard for these characters right now. But yeah, I'm literally, I'm on chapter 28. I don't know what happened I literally started this a day ago I have not put it down I've just been so sucked into it I honestly have just forgotten what we were doing here we're here we're on chapter 28 it's a dual point of view between Amaya and Cade the slow burn in this story is like it's literally everything page 210 and the slow burn is still going I already started chapter 28 but I just tabbed this one little quote it's from Kate's point of view and he says she will be my downfall because I am just a man and for her I am weak Anyways, we are gonna keep going. I have to like slow my roll with this one. I'm flying through it so fast because I love it, but like I wanna slow down with it because I don't want it to end. But like I also just wanna finish it and see like what happens. I don't know. I literally can't with Cade. I can't. Oh my gosh. I'm on chapter 33 now. We've only read like a couple chapters. It's like every chapter, it just gets better and better. And Cade does something else to totally surprise me. He's so protective over Amaya and Quinn. And it's just like, 
If you don't know this about Emily McIntyre, she likes to leave Easter eggs throughout her books to kind of hint at what her next book will be. And I have a guess that her next book, because she did announce that she's writing one more book in this series, I think it's going to be a Little Mermaid reimagining. I feel like I'm seeing a lot of little Easter eggs in here that are hinting towards the Little Mermaid. I'm just like loving this so, so much. I'm trying to keep this vlog as spoiler free as possible, so that's why I'm not not like saying too much about what's going on. We're still rolling with the slow burn here, which I am absolutely loving. Kate has just discovered something about Amaya that he, of course, naturally wants to protect her from because he's very protective of her and her little brother, Quinn. We only have this little bit left. I'm loving this so, so much. I can already tell it's going to be like a five star. It's gonna be like an infinity star for me. I love all of them, but Cross is definitely like my favorite favorite one out of the series so far. I can't even with this right now. Okay guys, I actually meant to film this clip earlier before I left my house, but then I was just rushing and I just decided to take you guys with me. We finished Crossed by Emily McIntyre. I finished this book and then I couldn't even talk about it because I needed so much time to like process it and because I was loving it so, so much, I didn't want it to end, obviously. When it did end, I was like, oh, what am I supposed to do with myself now? So it took a few days to, I guess, just dwell on finishing this amazing book. This is definitely one of my infinity ratings. I love this story so, so much. The ending was so crazy and hectic and I felt like I was literally on a roller coaster. It was so exciting and thrilling. I'm in shock that I loved it as much as I did. I just don't think I'm ever gonna recover from Kate and Amaya as twisted and weird and dark as it is. They definitely radiate that soulmate vibe throughout the entire story. They're always drawn to one another. I still stand by her next book being A Little Mermaid Reimagining. I just feel like there were so many little clues in there that were pointing to the Little Mermaid and pointing to Ariel. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a little update on our reading vlog. We have now finished two book series, so I feel like we're doing a really good job in this vlog. I feel like we're really cruising. I already have an idea of what book I want to start next, and I've been holding off on starting it because I've heard very mixed reviews about it. But I feel like this is the perfect video to start the book in because it's just gonna push me and motivate me to read it. But we're probably gonna start that a little bit later. So our next read in this vlog is gonna be King of Pride by Anna Hong. If you know, you know the Twisted series is still one of my favorite, favorite series of all time. There's just something so twisted about them that I absolutely love. A lot of people don't like the series and it's very controversial, but I personally loved every single book in that series. She recently came out with her second book series. It's the Kings of Sin series and this is book two. Book one is King of Wrath and that tells the story of Dante and Vivian. We briefly meet Dante and Vivian throughout the Twisted series because Dante is actually friends with Christian Harper who Twisted Lies revolves around so we get that little connection between the characters. I do like that these books take place in the same universe as the Twisted series because we get glimpses into the other characters from that series. I love seeing where my favorite couples are and what's going on, what's new with them, and I love seeing how their stories tie in to these stories. King of Pride is all about Kai and Isabella, I believe, and Kai is actually close friends with Dante so there's like the connection between the two books and also just like Dante Kai is a CEO of his own company and he's a billionaire. Isabella is I believe a bartender at Valhalla which is like this elite club that Dante and Kai are a part of and her and Kai are supposed to spark up some type of romance. It's not like my favorite story setup. I feel like it's kind of weird but that's what we're working with and I have high hopes for it. I do have to say 
day I have seen a lot of mixed reviews on this book a lot of people were saying that it's not their favorite and that it was really hard for them to get into and for myself personally when I read King of Wrath I liked it but not as much as the Twisted series so I'm a little nervous for this but I'm also really excited because it's Anna Hong and I love her writing I love her characters I love her storytelling she's his opposite in every way and the greatest temptation he's ever known reserved controlled and proper to a fault Kai Young has neither the time nor inclination for chaos and Isabella with her purple hair and inappropriate jokes is chaos personified with a crucial CEO vote looming and a media empire at strike the billionaire heir can't afford the distraction she brings Isabella is everything he shouldn't want but with every look and every touch he's tempted to break all his rules and claim her as his own bold impulsive and full of life Isabella Valencia has never met a party she doesn't like or a man she couldn't charm except for Kai Young it shouldn't matter he's not her type the man translates classics into Latin for fun and his membership at the exclusive club where she bartends means he's strictly off limits but she can't deny that beneath his cool exterior is a man who could make her melt with just a touch no matter how hard they try it they can't resist giving in to their forbidden desires even if it costs them everything spicy I don't know we are gonna jump right into this see what happens see what the deal is between Kai and Isabella we know they're gonna fall in love I want to know all the in-between stuff I literally look like an egg. We're gonna deal with it. But I wanted to give you guys a little reading update on King of Pride. I am on chapter 12, page 94. I have to say, I am loving this so freaking much. I'm honestly loving it more than King of Wrath. I'm so surprised because I literally saw so many weird reviews on this book and so many people were like, I don't really like Kai and Isabella. I thought it was really boring and bland and blah, blah, blah. Calm me boring and bland because I love their story. I am obsessed with Kai's character. I'm obsessed with him. He's so cute because he's literally just a nerd. All he cares about is work and if he's not working, he's literally just reading all the time and if he's not reading, he's literally translating the books he reads into Latin. He's very quiet and reserved and honestly just brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. He's also British. So I love that. This is going so much better than I thought it would go because I know I said in the beginning I was a little bit iffy on, you know, him being like this billionaire falling in love with this waitress at the club he's a part of. It just seemed really weird to me. Isabella is actually best friends with Vivian, who is Dante's wife. So we're getting a glimpse into Isabella's personal life. We're seeing her with her best friends. She's also trying to write a book. She just has like this whole other life outside of Valhalla, which I don't know why I didn't think she would have. I'm really enjoying getting little glimpses into her life and her whole main story in this is she's trying to finish her book to prove to her family that she can be a writer. That's what she wants to do in life. She wants to be an author. And then Kai's like side story is he is in the middle of like probably the most important vote of his life. He's trying to become CEO of this company that has been in his family forever and he's nervous he might lose so that's kind of what we're getting glimpses into when it comes to Kai's point of view. The little things he's doing for Isabella is so stinking cute. You could just feel like their connection. They're just drawn together. You know what? It's like they're literally like attached to each other by a little string. That's exactly what it feels like reading this. Chapter 11 was so, it was so cute because Kai knows that Isabella is in the middle of writing a book and she's kind of struggling. She's hitting writer's block. He shows her this secret library of his 
it was so cute it was so stinking cute and he's like you can write in here whenever you need beautiful it's like a breath of fresh air when it comes to Anna Hong's books because they're very very twisted and dark books in this book there's not really like a dark twisted side to any of it like Kai is literally just a normal dude I love how simple yet beautiful their story is I feel like it's nice to have like this calmer type of romance story because I've been reading some really Really crazy ones lately especially in the dark romance genre I mean we literally just finished cross that was so dark this is nice we're gonna keep going though I've only read like 100 pages I think it's a 400 page book I'm just taking my time with it we're just vibing we're gonna keep going and see what happens I literally don't understand why anyone would say that this book is not good I am so obsessed with their story guys it's not even funny I'm loving this like so so much. I'm on page 200 chapter 24. Kai and Isabella's like relationship throughout this entire story is giving me all those happy fuzzy butterflies. They're just making my heart so happy. Their story is so sweet. I don't know. I think I said this a little bit earlier in the video but I love that it's not like a super crazy intense storyline. Like in the Twisted series every book had some crazy like storyline plot twist i feel like there was always violence in them and then in the first book in this series king of wrath dante definitely had like a darker side to him i love kai's character so much i feel like he is just the sweetest human ever and he's so genuine and the way he cares for isabella is just it just makes my heart so happy truly the conflict that they're having in this story it's so dumb but also kind of realistic i'm flying through it i always fly through her books because she's such an easygoing writer and i'm loving this i thought i'd just update you guys and let you know if you see any negative reviews on this book don't trust them we're gonna keep going though <laughs> Do you guys like my hat? <laughs> I feel like this video is a little bit all over the place, but I hope you enjoyed it still. And I hope you had fun. I hope you're able to take some book recs away from today's video. We didn't wrap up King of Pride. I finished this, by the way. I finished this like a few days ago. Five stars. Five stars across the board. I was so impressed with the way this book went. I loved every second of it. There really wasn't a moment where I was doubting that it would be a five star rating. I loved Kai and Isabella's relationship. I loved watching them grow as individuals throughout the whole story. The main conflict that they run into. Kai is a CEO, he's a billionaire, and Isabella is a waitress slash writer in progress. And in the eye of society, they just don't pair well together. They don't look well together. Obviously, that is just ridiculous. I know that. You know that. We all know that. So I thought it was a very dumb conflict when I was reading about it, but at the same time, that's a very realistic thing. We see that all the time in the media. But nonetheless, I absolutely adored this. I adored the relationship. I think Kai is one of the best male characters Anna Hong has ever created. I am obsessed with him. I never like doubted Kai and Isabella. Like I knew that they would make it to the end no matter what. I always knew that Isabella and Kai were endgame and I really appreciate that when I'm reading books. You know what I just realized? Hold on. They are all the purple books in their series. How funny is that? I didn't even plan that, to be completely honest. King of Pride was our five-star read of the vlog. Cross by Emily McIntyre was my infinity read. This is an infinity read. It was so messed up, but like in the best way possible. And then we have Redeemed, which was a four-star read. I loved Chloe and Santi's story, and I thought this was such a great conclusion to the Dirty Air series. But yeah, thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you had fun. We knocked off not only three books in this video, but we knocked off three book series in this video, which I think is a pretty, pretty big accomplishment. But I'm gonna end the video off here just because I feel like I've been talking a lot in this video and I don't want to bore you guys. So with all that being said, I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for hanging out with me and I'll see you in my next video.